In the effort to clean up the engine bay, a few episodes ago we replaced this TT's valve cover gasket. That cleaned up a lot of leaks, but there are still more. This car has all the symptoms of a failed intake manifold gasket, along with likely needing some injector O-rings. Today's goal is to fix all of this. While we're in there, we're also going to be upgrading the rest of the PCV and doing some future proofing for when we eventually add a larger turbo. In the effort not to do the same job twice, since we're taking the intake manifold off now, it's a fantastic time to upgrade. This is an upgraded intake manifold by Graham's Performance and 034 Motorsports. First of all, it's gorgeous. Second of all, it allows for a lot of flexibility and increased airflow. It allows you to run a larger throttle body, reroute a lot of vacuum lines, and has ports for water meth injection. It also allows you to configure which side your throttle body sits on. Stock 225 sit on the right, and most other 18s sit on the left. The benefit to being able to change which side this is on comes when we big turbo the car. If we end up designing our own turbo kit, we're going to have to design all the boost piping as well, and being able to reroute the direction of everything is going to be super helpful. Today, however, we just want to get this in place with what's on the car now, meaning before we do any install, we need to swap it to exit on the right side. This thing is built to be rebuildable, so it comes with its own gasket, and it's really easy to work with. It's also incredibly satisfying to look at. And if you're wondering if you absolutely need a new tune to run something like this, the answer is, it depends. If you're increasing the diameter of the throttle body, absolutely. In my case, right now, I'm using the stock throttle body, so the car really won't behave that much differently. There's just gonna be slightly less back pressure after the throttle body. Like I said, at this point, this is just entirely for future proofing. When we upgrade the turbo, we'll be upgrading the throttle body, and at that stage, we're gonna be tuning the car again. These are torqued down to about 62 inch pounds, if you're curious. With the new manifold prepared, we're ready to start taking apart the car. The 1.8 platform you have is gonna dictate what all you need to remove. No matter what though, you're gonna need to remove the injector harnesses and the fuel rail. After that, it gets car specific because you wanna remove all the vacuum lines and PCV connections that are anywhere close to being in the way. And there can be a lot of them. The 225 is on the extreme end of this because all of the vacuum lines generally attach to the intake manifold on the top or the bottom. So they're easy to confuse. The cool thing about this is it's easy if you take it one step at a time. I like to take a piece of tape and write where the connection for the vacuum line goes on the end. That way, no matter how long the install takes me, I'll always know what connects where. I also find it really helpful to just have an abundance of extra vacuum line laying around. These engines are pretty old now, and there's a good chance that you're going to find a vacuum leak when you're removing this many of them so it's always good to have replacement hose on hand. And honestly, pretty much any brand will do so long as it's silicone and temperature rated for an engine bay. With the vacuum lines off, I took a screwdriver and started trying to remove as much of the dirt around the connection to the block as I could. Since we're removing this, we're gonna have four holes directly into the combustion chamber. As best we can, we wanna minimize what will fall in. The injector harness also connects to a knock sensor, so you're going to want to remove this as well. To remove the injector harness, there's a little metal pin on the back side of each injector, which after pushing in, you can just pull the harness up. It's pretty simple, and then you can slide the whole harness over to the side and out of the way. We're going to be taking the fuel rail and the injectors out as one piece so we don't have to disconnect anything or get fuel anywhere. Since the injectors are coming out, there's going to be a lot of grime that could fall into the engine, so once again, we're cleaning. Two screws hold the fuel rail down and then it can simply slide up and pivot to the side. 
If you're replacing the injectors while doing this too, you are gonna have to disconnect the fuel lines for the fuel rail, which will get gas everywhere. Each injector has two O-rings, one for the fuel rail and one for the manifold. And based on how much debris this car has around the injector holes, I am guessing that the lower O-ring needs replacing. This car is pretty high mileage, but this is still quite a bit more debris than I would like to see. So I'm glad we're doing this. I plugged these holes so I didn't have to risk a bunch of dirt falling down them, and then I proceeded to clean as much as I could. Once again, I'm just trying to prevent all this grime from falling into the engine when we remove the manifold. At this point, we're about ready to pull the manifold itself. I broke each of the manifold bolts loose by hand and then proceeded to remove them. This manifold is connected to a lot of things, and you're honestly bound to forget one. In my case, it was the lower PCV connection. But once that was done, we were good to remove it. The great news is that even though the manifold was in terrible shape and was leaking, there's hardly any carbon buildup inside the engine itself. Pretty quickly after you remove the intake manifold, I suggest you plug these holes as well, especially if you've got any other work planned while you have the manifold off. At this point, this install had gone smoothly too smoothly. It was now time to move on to the PCV system. We've replaced two of the three main components of this in the past, and we really only have the last hose to replace. Too bad this car has an evil tendency to save the best for last. Wow, okay, that's pretty bad. Oh, this is bad. <laughs> Holy crap. Dude. We've already replaced the part of the PCV that filters the oil. This is the part of the PCV that takes that filtered oil and returns it to the engine. And it's probably the worst example I've seen. You know, I'm glad we're doing the PCV considering it is in almost worse condition than the intake manifold leaks. So, glad we're getting it all done. If only the kink in the hose was the only issue it had. Little did I know, I was just scratching the surface of what all was wrong. That's just, yeah, that's exactly what you want. What, you're telling me this is loose? <laughs> Holy cow. There we go. <laughs> mm. Careful. <laughs> oh my God, this is so stupid. That's horrible. There we go. Oh my gosh. Sheared off! Holy God! <laughs> that is broke, broke. Broken, broken. Oh. I know what's wrong with it. <laughs> Got it. It's done. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, once again, I'm glad we're replacing this. That is carnage. We're gonna have to be pretty careful taking this out. I will do my best. The hose is collapsed, it's clogged, and it's completely sheared off at the bottom. Just exactly what you want, isn't it? After removing the pin that holds this in place, we can do our best to try and remove it, hopefully in one piece. Oh, great. That's what I was worried about. Yeah, it broke off in there. Damn it. Since the pipe was sheared off above where it actually connects to the car, we had to use a screwdriver to fish out the small pieces, all the while making sure they don't fall down the hole and clog the oil pickup. I plugged the hole and then spent a good hour trying to get everything out. That was annoying to get out. I then did my best to clean up as much of the debris and oily residue as I could. This had definitely been like this for a while though, because 
everything was coated. Thankfully, the new 034 hose went in without a cinch. I reassembled the rest of the PCV, and now the whole thing has new parts. I'm planning an oil change in the near future because I'm a little worried about debris falling down there. I may also end up pulling the pan or something like that, depending on how paranoid I get. Blowing an engine from something like that would be really unfortunate. I will say I am very impressed though. This car ran completely fine like that, for who knows how long. And other than a little bit of oil everywhere, I honestly had no idea it was that bad. Props to you, 18T. Hopefully we can give this thing a better life than it lived before I owned it. Back on the intake side of things, we've got a few things we need to do to prepare the new intake manifold to replace the old one. First and foremost, we need to transfer over all of the sensors and the throttle body, and I'm using new gaskets for both of these that came with the kit. There are also a number of vacuum lines that come off the intake manifold, and we need to pick where we want them to be on the new manifold. The manifold has multiple holes and options for you to put them in, so you can really set it up however you think would be best for your application. To prep this thing for our first test fitting, I'm just gonna try to mimic where the stock ones were and plug the rest. Here's a good view for how the manifold accounts for upgraded throttle body size. We're just gonna reuse the stock one for now, so we don't have to worry about that. Another thing I'll note is if you're gonna reuse the stock intake manifold, I suggest you replace these two along with the O-rings for the injector. They're gonna come with your rebuild kit. After opening the new gasket, we were ready to test fit everything. This is an aftermarket option, so I don't expect things to be perfect right off the bat. tight though. I'm gonna redo some stuff. Just as I expected, things don't fit perfectly. But overall, what we need to change is actually really not that bad. The taps I put in for the two vacuum lines underneath the intake manifold are really, really close to the alternator due to the increased plenum size. This is just me being nitpicky, but I'd rather them be a little bit further away. So we're gonna switch them to the top side of the intake manifold. And this is actually gonna be kinda cool because it'll give us the chance to reroute a lot of the vacuum lines for a much cleaner setup in the bay. Issue one checked off. Now we can get back into reinstalling the thing. I'm using new install hardware and following the specific torque pattern that you need to to torque down an intake manifold. It's a lot less torque than you would think, and you start on the inside and alternate your way out. Standard gasket stuff, really. Most 1.8s are around seven foot pounds for the torque, but I do suggest you double check this for your specific block and intake manifold. A lot of people also say you should torque it and then come back 30 minutes later and recheck them.
You can tell how paranoid I am by the fact that I plugged the holes on the new intake manifold. But we're at the stage where we can reinstall the injector. Reinstalling the fuel rail and the harnesses is exactly like removing it except in reverse. The only difference is you're going to want to use a washer when you bolt the fuel rail down. This is just so that it fits properly. You're also going to want to replace the o-rings at the bottom of the injectors. This connection looks like it's not really gonna fit, but it actually fits just fine if you bend it slightly. This part of my PCV system is brand new, so the rubber is still really pliable and it doesn't kink any of the hoses. Long term, I'll get a right angle tap though. Now we get to move into what I'm dubbing the creativity phase of this. Since we have a new manifold, we're gonna have to rearrange where all the vacuum lines go. We have the same number of taps into the manifold, but they're in very different locations. And there's not a mount for this bracket anymore. So we're gonna have to use some of that universal vacuum line and reroute everything. And this is something I've wanted to do for a long time. The vacuum lines on this car are notoriously confusing and routed in pretty questionable ways. So this is a really good opportunity to both simplify them and make the car easier to service and diagnose issues in in the future. I started by just reconnecting everything. I wanted to see where everything needed to be connected and then figure out how we could optimize the path of how they get connected. I spent quite a bit of time working on this and I think at the end of the day, we definitely cleaned up the vacuum situation this car has. You'll get to see it in more detail towards the end of the video. At this stage, I also reconnected the charge pipe and all of its corresponding hoses. We were getting pretty close to a first start, but there is still one more glaring issue that we're gonna need to address. And you can probably see it. Back to the glaring issue that we're gonna need to address. The stock hose that connects from the front mount intercooler kit to the throttle body is not long enough. The new manifold sits differently, so the throttle body is higher than it used to be. It gives us a lot more room, but we're gonna need a new hose. This brings me to something I've always done for my cars that has saved me in situations like this before and is gonna save me again today. I suggest that you buy a set of eBay hoses for your car. Yes, cheap eBay ones that fit terribly. And there's a good reason for that. Hear me out, they generally fit really bad. But in those cases, they're generally way too big. So in this case, they actually fit perfectly. And they save me time waiting for a proper upgraded hose to show up. And at the end of the day, a braided silicone hose is a braided silicone hose. So it's still gonna work just like a nice one would. It just may not be as polished. Definitely not saying you should run eBay hoses forever. In my mind, they're perfect to hold you over until you can get proper ones in. In my case, this also works doubly good because I plan on upgrading the throttle body in the future, so we'd need a new hose for that anyways, and we might as well wait to upgrade it until then, because this one works just fine. I think we're ready to start the car, got everything put together. All I want to do is move it and see if we have any major vacuum leaks. We did it. <laughs> busy day, busy weekend. This was a really productive weekend. We got a lot done on both cars, as you guys will see in the next few weeks, but the list of issues are never ending because on our way here today in the TT, our windshield cracked again on the other side, but this one's gonna spread. So we're gonna have to get that figured out. Lovely.
I spent a lot of time driving the car after the install, and I am super pleased with the upgrades. You'd be surprised how much faster your car feels without a fuel leak and leaking air out of the intake manifold gasket. Power response is awesome, and the turbo feels like it spools way faster. Plus, the engine bay looks phenomenal compared to how it did before. It's still not perfect, but this is a major upgrade both cosmetically and performance-wise for the car. As you can see, I rerouted all of the vacuum lines so that they're accessible on the top of the engine bay. Even the sensor that used to sit underneath it is accessible from the top and sits over by the fuel pressure regulator. And the coolest thing is when I started it up, we didn't have any boost leaks or vacuum leaks that we created. My idle vacuum was exactly the same as it was before we touched it, which is something I'm super happy with. I'll be sure to keep you guys updated on this in the future. I've got a lot planned and I'm really excited. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider dropping a like and subscribing for more. I'll see you all in the next episode. Have a wonderful day.